In a week, the world will be marking one of the deadliest terror attacks known to humanity, 9-11. Today, international terror continues to threaten innocent lives across the globe, and not just in Israel. Joining us in the studio today is terror expert and Knesset member Dr. Anat Belko, whose latest book, The Smarter Bomb, studies what draws women and children to terror. Thanks so much for coming in. Thanks for having me, Natasha. So to begin, tell us about uh, this book. It just came out in its newest form, and it's gotten a lot of praise from the Israeli Prime Minister, even from Henry Kissinger. Yeah, I'm very proud of that, you know, because I wrote this book almost six years ago. It was published four years ago in America, and the publisher asked me, they told me, you know, you predict so many things, so we would like you just to uh, update the final words and to publish it in soft cover. So it will come very soon, in two weeks it will be, you know, in Amazon, it's already there. And uh, I think that what we see right now, it's a wave, a tsunami of minors involved in terrorism. Actually, from my point of view, also mass raping is terrorism. It's a kind of, it's a form of terrorism. Absolutely. And, uh, and uh, we see uh, more women involved in terrorism that push to the corner, and come try to stab soldiers or other things that we saw. And we see that the world is in danger. The September 11 event was not so far, not so many years ago. But people in America forgot that and think that it was just one time and that's it. it and I can say that few months ago, there was a guy in the metro center, a junction worker there, that he also tried to carry out a terror attack there. And there was a cell of terrorism. And I'm thinking about myself, when I was living in DC, when I was a visiting professor at uh, GW, taking the metro to Foggy Bottom Station, through the metro, st uh, metro center station, I cannot think about what could happen there and the blast and the casualties and so it's very dangerous. We're not speaking just about high towers like September 11, but metro stations and we saw things like that, uh, malls, shops, restaurants. We see what's happening in, in uh, France and I think and not in Europe as in general that people, you know, shouting at the street Allahu Akbar and shooting or stabbing and slaughtering people. And I think that we faced a tsunami of terrorism, and as I defined it in the Knesset, first day in the Knesset, a year and a half ago, I said it's a World War III, and we should be able to cope and to defeat it. Now, let's talk a little bit more about your focus on children and women, more specifically adolescents. 50% uh, of the recent terror attacks here in Israel were carried out by adolescents. Why is that the case? You know, one time uh, Hamas uh, terrorist told me in jail when I interviewed him, the children are the small change. You can use them. Sometimes they are not effective because they don't kill enough people. They don't have, their mind is so not focused and they don't kill enough children. But I can tell you that uh, we see the social media very active. We see the education system in the Palestinian Authority that just a few days ago on television official from the Palestinian Authority said look at that school we have 60 shahids martyrs from this school he didn't speak about the achievements of the students he didn't say anything he said he counted the shahids the martyrs that from school so I think that they are very they want to be to get the recognition and in this age thrilled and ventures, I, I will do something, I'll let, I, I will show my, my peer groups uh, how I'm acting, I'll put my face on the wall or the letter, the declaration that I'm going to be a shaheed, and you know, and halas in Arabic, it's like finish, this is, the, this is the show and the show is running. So Israel has been faced with this moral dilemma, what do you do when you're dealing with a 14-year-old that's carrying out a terror attack against an innocent Israeli civilian? Right now we saw that the IDF actually just launched a new training program aimed at uh, promoting non-lethal methods of confronting terrorists. How will this help Israel's ability to, to confront terror attacks by, from young people, if at all? 
Natasha, the IDF, I served in the IDF 25 years. I can tell you this is the most moral army upon earth. We see that soldiers try not to actually to shoot terrorists and to try to cope without casualties. But sometimes when a terrorist, even if a 14 year old boy come and try to stab a female soldier or male soldier in the back and they don't know if they have explosive belt on their body, they must, you know, neutralize them. The other thing that I want to say as a Knesset member, I actually promoted legislation against young minors terrorists. And we see that between the age of 12 and 14, you see a lot of children that use them, that the PA and others, incitement in the social media and television to carry out terror attacks. So in this age, they will be in a closed shelter and after that, they will see if they can go to jail or not to be able to prevent because many times the terrorists actually use them as human shield and also abuse them in a way. You are minor, go and stab a soldier, everything will be okay. The Israelis will feel sorry about you and you wouldn't go to jail. I interviewed uh, youth like that and they said, and after that when we need to spend 20 years in jail, nobody comes even to visit us. So they just abuse us. Now, how is the Palestinian terror that's facing Israel right now different than what's happening in Europe, for example? We're seeing a rise in terror attacks in France, across uh, Central Europe. Is there a difference? Is this related in any way? I can see that I'm also a member, as a member of Knesset, head of delegation of OSCE. They're dealing with uh, security staff, with the European parliamentarian, that they ignore and do not want to see the problem and do not want to define the problem. When they speak about foreign fighters, they don't speak about the jihadist, they don't say terrorist, they don't say Islamist. And I think that, let's say, we need to face it. A lot of Muslims are the first victims. Actually, most of the victims are Muslims. It, it's a fact. But many terrorists are Muslims, also Muslims. And we cannot ignore that. We have the, the Sunnah version of ISIS, Daesh, and we have the, the Shia version of Hezbollah, Iran, and Assad, Alawite. So it's like we need to face it that we see right now a big, big war between the Sunnah and the Shia, and also both of them against the West. And we see what's happening right now with Daesh. I think that it's just the tip of the iceberg. We we'll see a lot of terror attacks, and I said it, you know, just a month ago. I can tell you that from a Georgia conference, the last one that we have with the European parliamentarian, I spoke a few minutes and I told them, you need to define the enemy. You need to give a fight back. You cannot win this battle without that. And uh, some of them agree with me, and some of them denied the problem and said, oh, we have Catholics that are terrorists, we have that and that. Excuse me, see what's happening with Daesh, this cruelty, how minors and antiquities and uh, slaughtering people in the, uh, in the streets uh, and, uh, uh, and killing people and killing and ruining cultures and history, like Palamira, Tadmo. So uh, I think that it's about time to say that to the Americans and also to the European, we have a big challenge and we need to cope, to put the ego aside and to collaborate all the security forces and actually to increase the, the awareness of the people, of the people in the streets, that there is a problem, be aware if you see something wrong, be aware around you, and not to define like the terror attacks that Nidal Hassan carry out in Fort Hood, in Texas, Fort Hood unit, and they say, oh, it's a work violence, or this guy is crazy guy, and this he has a, a mental illness. No, not everybody is ill or had mental illness, and you see like a, a battalion of, of soldiers uh, well equip, uh, equipped, uh, to fight this mentally ill, so-called mentally ill. Everybody know what is the problem, 
So go for it. Sure, not all the Muslims are terrorists, but no. they know, but we know that we should define it and fight it because it will be worse than now. Well, it looks like it's going to have to be a global effort to, to combat what's now happening in Europe and obviously here in Israel. Thank you so much for coming in. Thanks for having me, Natasha. Thank you.